there's a Goldwing GL 1500 carburetor in the bottom of that five gallon bucket. Why is that? Let's go fish it out. Hey guys, Octane Restorations, and we are back with a 1988 through 2000 Honda GL 1500 Goldwing. Getting into the cleaning of the carburetor, some stuff we're gonna need. We're gonna need some spray carbon choke cleaner. This is just a gum out brand off Walmart's website, but off brands work fine. I wouldn't use brake parts cleaner, I would use carbon choke cleaner. Next, we got an oil drain pan. If you can find these at Dollar Tree, you can get one for a buck 25, but this is the cheapest at Walmart at three bucks. That's what we're gonna be washing the stuff in. Next, this 36 pack of one inch paint brushes from Harbor Freight. I really like these paint brushes, they do a good job. You can cut them to make them stiffer. I'll show you how to do that later. Next, we're gonna have some pliers. I mentioned this in other posts, but some needle nose pliers. And lastly, a wire brush to steal a bristle off of to clean the jets. Full disclosure, Honda is against this, either using a piece of wire or a drill bit to clean the jets because it can quote unquote enlarge the hole, but I've never had that problem happen with these wire bristles. So just keep that in mind, Honda advises against it. So this is how I personally clean the carburetors. First, I remove all the rubber pieces as you saw in the previous video. I disassembled it completely. Now I'm actually going to scrub the metal pieces with this poor man's part washer. What it is, it's a oil change tub with the old gasoline we found in the tank whenever we did this. You can use fresh gasoline, old gasoline, it doesn't matter. Just know fresh gasoline will put off more vapors. I've got this paintbrush that I am brushing off all the debris with, as you can see here. If you haven't watched my other two videos on removing the carburetor and disassembling it, I would watch those because those do provide some tips and tricks. What to do and what not to do. But as you can see, there's the difference on the right, the part that I've lightly touched with the paintbrush and the part on the left that I haven't. So as you see, it does a great job of cleaning these carburetors up. Gasoline's a solvent and it is dissolving this grease, dirt and grime, everything like that. This is a $1 paintbrush from Harbor Freight. Really, really cheap. But like I was saying, I've got all the metal pieces, all the rubbers removed. Everything here is safe for gasoline to touch. This part, all you're really doing is cleaning all the dirt and grime off with the paintbrush. It's pretty basic, but there's a lot of stuff to clean. And it, it's crazy. It's going to look bad when you pull it out of the gasoline, but once you start mechanically agitating it with the paintbrush, it'll clear right off. Be sure to scrub the throttle plates, throttle bodies, everything like that pretty good here, especially if you're having a problem with it sticking. I cut one of my brushes down. I'll show you and talk about that a little more in a second. Be sure to have a fan or something blowing away some of those gasoline vapors. There is some literature on gasoline vapors causing cancer and it gets you lightheaded. It is an oxygen displacer. Plus it's also flammable. If you use old gasoline, it's less flammable doesn't put off near as many vapors as new gasoline. So especially if you're having new gasoline, have a fan or something blowing those vapors away from you. How I mentioned my brushes earlier, the reason I cut one of them is if you cut it, the bristles actually get a little stiffer. So you see, I left that one full length. So the bristles are more flexible. You can't scrub as hard with them, but it's better if you're trying to get down somewhere deep. If you really need some scrubbing action though, what you can do is you can cut the bristles towards that metal band, towards the handle, like I did this one right there, and it significantly stiffens them. It's got less room for them to move. The shorter you cut them, the stiffer they get, versus if you leave it long, how it's still flexible and bendable. So just a little tip. If you need some more scrubbing power, 
go ahead, get another brush, cut it. It'll give you a little more scrubbing power. Also, buy the oil drain pan. Up above, you see that little plastic container. I've got some of that fresh old gasoline in there, and that's what I'm using to dip the brushes in to clean it, because they will get gunked up. The tips will get saturated with all that tar, all that leftover gasoline. So if you have a little container that you can rinse your brushes in, it'll help. Like you see all that stuff on the left, that can gunk up your brushes. So if you just have something to clean your brushes in, that little plastic container with the old gasoline, it really helps. Because if you don't, you'll find it just kind of pushes it around. <laughs> but, so that's just a little tidbit, little tidbit of knowledge. Might help you. As you can see here, the throttle plates were stuck completely and it is snapping back like it is brand new. It's a combination of the soaking and a combination of the scrub. So they restored that, restored that part back to new, which is what we needed. Same thing on this side. Other side is snapping back to brand new. Again, exactly what we were hoping for, exactly what we wanted. Be sure to scrub the throttle plates. Like I was saying earlier, I recommend getting a rebuild kit. I believe it's like 30 bucks for two rebuild kits because this has two carburetors. Replace all the O-rings inside the carburetor on the jets, the main jet, everything like that. New flow bowl gaskets. I recommend everything gets new O-rings. There's also some right there. If your kit has an O-ring for it, <laughs> replace it. There's also one on the float. If you take that little float screw out right there there's an o-ring in there too so replace those at the least inspect them but if you're going to go through this trouble i'd go ahead and replace all of them so we're just going to finish scrubbing and as you can see i dipped my brush in the little thing to kind of clear it out this is what i was talking about if your brush gets saturated with that tar you see how it's just kind of pushing it around That's why you have the little dipper right there. As you can see, it's collecting some of that tar on the bottom. And that's what's saturating your brush. So you just put some gasoline in there, rub your brush around, and it'll get some of that tar off and you're good to go scrub it again. I normally just once that little plastic container gets full, I dump it in my big bucket and then I refill it up with some new fresh old gas. <laughs> Is there such thing as fresh old gas? <laughs> it's new old gas, fresh old gas, you know, same thing. It's new to me gas. <laughs> but as you can see, that doesn't have any tar on the bottom. You clean your brush in it, it'll get some of that nice tar out of there. This is just kind of showing you how much dirt and grime it really did get off of these. So this is just the accelerator pump. And as you can see, it had tons of dirt caked on the outside, inside, everywhere. All that dirt in the bottom. 
missed that rubber piece, but that's just a cover. It still, it still functions fine. So these are vacuum diaphragm slides. You can take your brush with the old gasoline and wipe the plastic part right there, that black cylinder, don't get it on the diaphragm, try not to. Gasoline can make rubber diaphragm swell, which makes it a pain in the butt to get back in there, if it'll even fit. You can take a little bit of gasoline on the paintbrush, rub it on the slides if you're having a problem with it sticking, which, you know, I did do that to this one because I was having a problem with the slide sticking, and then I would oil them with WD-40, but be sure, yeah, see WD-40, a little bit right there. You can even use WD-40 to apply it to the slides and wipe it off because WD-40 actually does have solvent properties. So, just something to think about. Don't get gasoline on that vacuum pistons diaphragm up on top. Again, this is what that tar in the bottom looks like. So that's actually what you're removing off of the carburetor. Some of that nice old varnish, especially if it's been sitting for a long time. <laughs> that can cause some problems. That can definitely clog a motorcycle's carburetor jet. So as you can see, this process did clean a lot of it. We were able to get a lot of that gunk out of there. Again, just using the brush. I'm not really a fan of just dousing the whole thing in carburetor cleaner just because of the rubber pieces. I would rather let all the metal soak in gasoline and then manually agitate it off. But just showing you that's what it looks like in there. Just continue to clean and scrub. Just keep on doing that until you get everything nice and nice and clean. Now it's time to actually use the carburetor cleaner. Anywhere where there's a jet or a passage, I'm going to spray it with the carburetor cleaner. As you can see, it cleared that jet out perfectly. Honda's shop manual, they advise against using a wire brush, a wire bristle to clean out jets. I've always done it that way, but they state it can cause a hole too big and cause a problem. Right here I'm using carburetor cleaner and every little passage I find. There's a lot of passages on these motorcycles, every jet, every hole, because some of the holes are air passages, some of them are fuel passages, but they all need to be cleared properly. Gonna go over a few of those passages with you. So the places I circled are places you should look for holes, every jet, every place that fuel runs through so where the fuel line comes into the carburetor down to the float spray that anywhere that there could be fuel deposits you need to clean so you see how this one has three jets it's it can vary year to year my 1988 that i'll show you here in a second has four right there so a little different design but all in all same concept same principle but the jets if they're not pressed in, take them out, give them a real good cleaning. The Honda shop manual states use compressed air for all jets and passages. Don't use a wire brush or drill bit per Honda. I have used before with these with good luck. So this is the 88, just showing you it's a little different how it has four instead of three. Just scour your carburetor for all passages. If you completely disassembled it, the carb cleaner shouldn't hurt anything because it should just be mostly metal in there. Again, most of the jets will have O-rings, so check those, make sure they're in good shape. On the air intake side, there's also some more holes. Just ensure all of those passages are clean with either carb cleaner sprayed or compressed air. There's a better look at them, but my thumb is covering some of them. So just ensure you clean out all those passages. And again, that's what I'm doing here. Finding all the holes I can, giving it a nice spray with carb cleaner. I don't actually think I had to use a wire brush for these because the soaking in gasoline helped get all that 
solvent dissolved, and then I was able just to hit it with carb cleaner. Your jets are brass, so just keep something in mind. But the gasoline won't hurt them, and as long as they're in good shape, you can reuse them. Just give them a nice thorough cleaning. Here I'm just using a flat blade slotted to install them back along with the o-rings. As you can see, I'm using a pick there to get off the old o-ring and put a new one on. But carb cleaner and a jets, little passages everywhere that it needs it. That's pretty much all for this video. Next video is going to be focusing on the rebuilding of the carburetor, putting it all back together, all the pieces where they go. So that tutorial will be next. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Let me know. This is Octane Restorations. Thank you for watching this tutorial. You have a good rest of your day.